So, so far we discussed SVD and we will conclude our discussion of singular value decomposition by looking at an example of its usage and then talk a bit more broadly about the method. So here is the idea. Let's think about the following problem. Imagine we want to identify all the users who like our Matrix movie. So the idea is we have this matri uh, matrix now of um, values of users to movies and now we would like to identify all the users who like the movie Matrix. And what we would like to learn from this task in a sense is that given that we saw that there are people who like sci-fi movies, so maybe we would like to kind of find a person who didn't even uh, uh, see the movie Matrix yet, but we may want to be able to say yes, but given that they like these other sci-fi movies, they may, they may also like the movie Matrix. And the question is, how can we do this using SVD? The answer to this question is that basically we want to map, map our query point into the concept space. We are given our data, um, users to movies matrix uh, A, right? We, did, we do the SVD of it, so here's the SVD. And what we want to do now is we are given our query point. Our query point Q is simply, um, we say, let's find all the users that like the movie matrix. So let's create in some sense this query, this query user, this artificial user that likes the a movie matrix and the idea is we want to find other users who are close to this given user in the in the concept space so what we will do is we have we have our uh, movies space we have our uh, data point q here our query point and we want to project it into our concept space the way the way we do this is that basically we simply do the inner product of our query point with each uh, concept vector in vector v because vector v is movies to concepts vector right so if we, if we go do this, um, why is taking the inner product a good idea? Because for example, Q times the first singular vector will simply ta take our uh, position of the point Q and, tell, and will tell, uh, tell us its location along the, the, the axis of the first singular vector. The second singular vector is orthogonal to the first one. So here it is, the V2. And when I multiply uh, Q times V2, we will basically now get the projection of the data point um, and its position on the second singular vector. So that's basically what will happen. So if we, if we do our, our uh, projection, so we take our vector Q, multiply it with matrix V, we do the thing, and here is what we obtain. So we obtain that this, for example, this particular user, now we are in this um, concept space, in this two-dimensional two concept space, where the first column of V is uh, sci-fi, and the second column of V was Romans. And now as we do the inner product, we basically see that, a lot, uh, that uh, our query point in some sense corresponds heavily to the sci-fi concept and very low, has a very low uh, coordinate value along the Romans concept. So this is now how we mo took the query and kind of mapped it into the concept space. So now, for example, imagine I have some user, some user D that we don't know what they think or they haven't told us anything about what they think about the movie Matrix, but they tell us they really like um, movies Alien and Serenity. So now if I take this user, again, uh, multiply them by our vector V and basically move them to the concept space, here are the coordinates or the position of that user in the concept space. So what is, what is a good thing that happened? So for example, if I now compare the positions of the original uh, user and the query in the original space and their, their, their locations in the concept space, I find the following. So the similarity between Q and D in our um, original space is zero, right? In a sense that for Alien and Serenity, our query doesn't, doesn't want them. For our movie Matrix, the user didn't tell us anything, so there is no similarity between these two vectors. But if I go back to my um, concept space, here I see that both of these uh, data points or both of these users Q and uh, D, they actually share uh, high values on the sci-fi concept and they share uh, low values on the Romans concept. So in some sense, I'm able to identify or I'm able to put together that Q and D are actually close together in our space, even though in the raw represent data representation, they don't share any uh, coordinates together. So in some sense, even though Q and D have zero ratings in common, we are able to identify that they are similar. 
because SVD was, a SVD was able to identify that kind of people who uh, liked Alien and Serenity also liked the Matrix uh, movie. So this basically is how we can make use of singular value decomposition. What I want to do now, now very briefly is to uh, relate singular value decomposition to another type of uh, decomposition of a matrix that is called uh, eigenvalue decomposition. Um, so first I will tell you what is the relationship between singular value uh, decomposition and eigen decomposition, and then we will con conclude. So what we know so far is that SVD is given a matrix. We represent it as a product of three matrices, U, sigma, and V transpose. What is eigenvalue decomposition? Eigenvalue decomposition is kind of um, more constrained. It says, given some matrix A, I want to represent it as a matrix X times the ma ma matrix capital lambda times X transpose again. So here I only have kind of product of two matrices, if you like, lambda um, and X. So uh, for eigen decomposition to, to even exist, what we have to do is first A has to be symmetric, which means that uh, the values above the diagonal have to be uh, the same as values above, uh, below the diagonal. While, for example, in SVD, we did not have this constraint. And then s both in SVD and eigenvalue decomposition, um, all the matrices are column orthonormal, which means that uh, columns are orthogonal to each other and have uh, unit length. And in both cases, um, U, uh, sigma, and lambda are diagonal matrices. So now the question is, what is the cor corresponding correspondence between singular value decomposition and eigen decomposition? So let's consider this simple case. Let's consider what is A times A transpose. So we know that we can take the matrix A and perform singular value decomposition of it. So let's do that. So what is A times A transpose is the singular val value decomposition of A times the singular value decomposition of A transpose, which is the same as singular value decomposition of A, and then trans trans transposing that. So now let's start thinking, what do we, what do we get next? Right? What we get next is that because the, the multiplication is commutative, we can kind of reorder, reorder the terms. Right? So for example, we can take the original expression and now just reorder the terms of mul or the order of multiplication. What we notice now is that we get, we get a multiplication of V transpose times V. And given that our matrices are orthonormal, this means that V, um, a matrix multiplied with itself, gives us um, an identity matrix. An identity matrix is simply a matrix that has zeros of the diagonal and it has values of one on the diagonal. So what this means is that it's basically an identity matrix, right? So what this means is that I, we can take um, A, A transpose and transform it down uh, if we take its SVD and see what happens, it turns out to become U times um, sigma, sigma transpose, um, U transpose. Okay? Um, similarly, the same thing happens, or a similar thing happens if I ask what is the singular value decomposition of A of matrix A times A transpose. I do, I do the, same, the same trick as before, and here now I obtain that this equals V times sigma times sigma transpose times V transpose. Um, one thing that I have to remember is that sigma is a diagonal matrix. So in some sense, sigma times sigma transpose is nothing else than another diagonal matrix that has the squares of the values on the diagonal, right? So what do we learn from this is the following. So if I take the um, uh, A times A transpose, which is a symmetric matrix, I do a singular value decomposition of it, what I end up with is an expression like, like this. Which basically means that in this case, u is a set of, uh, I can think of u as a set of eigenvectors, right? So as a part of the eigen decomposition, and I can think of sigma times sigma transpose as a set of uh, eigenvalues. So what this basically means is that if I have a matrix, I can do singular value decomposition of it, and from singular value decomposition of it, I can do the eigenvalue decomposition, where the relationship between eigenvalues and the singular values is that um, singular value squared are the eigenvalues of uh, the corresponding uh, matrix. So that's the, co that's the um, connection between the eigenvalue and the singular value decomposition. So to, um, to finish talking about singular value decomposition, here is, here is kind of the overview. 
So what is good about singular reality decomposition is that it gives, it gives us the optimal low rank approximation, right, in terms of the Frobenius norm. So it means that if I allow myself to take my data and represent it using a small number of dimensions, then SVD will be able to identify the best possible number of dimensions that basically give us the best possible projection of the data into some small dimensional space um, in such a way that if we go from this small dimensional space back to the original high dimensional space, the sum of the squares of the reconstruction error errors will be as small as possible. So that's great. Um, what is problematic with SVD are two things. First one is the interpretation problem. What this means that these singular vectors uh, specify some lim linear combination of uh, input columns or rows, which means that many times singular vectors are very hard to interpret. When I say uh, singular vectors are hard to interpret in our cases of movies to users matrix, I was able to interpret the first singular vector to, to correspond to the sci-fi movies and the second one to the uh, romance movies. Many times that is hard to do. And um, the second big drawback of singular value decomposition is what is called lack of sparse sparsity. What this means is that the input matrix A is often very sparse, which means it, it is full of zeros and only has a few non-zero elements uh, in it. But when, you, when we do singular value decomposition, the matrices U and V transpose, they will be dense. What I mean by that is all, basically all the values in this matrix will be non-zero. So many times, even though um, U and V have a very small number of um, columns or rows, so in some sense, in, in terms of the row column or row, row size, they are much smaller than the matrix A. In terms of the data size, maybe bigger because uh, A has very few non-zero elements or values, and then matrices U and V have a large number of non-zero elements. So what we will do next is we will look at the method that is much easier to compute, much faster to compute than the singular value decomposition, and also ma maintains the sparsity of rows and columns of U and V. And this is what we are going to look at next.